Ask St. Andrew, give me the strength and the trust that you had when you let those nets go. Hi, welcome to Seeking to Remain. My name is Kate. Thanks so much for joining me as we look forward to this Sunday's gospel and think about some different elements that are in it, things that I've been pondering that the Holy Spirit's been revealing to me to share with you all and that we can continue to grow together in this journey of life. Um, our, we are in the third Sunday of Ordinary Time. Just curious, how many Sundays of Ordinary Time do we get before it's Lent? Not all that many. The last Sunday of Ordinary Time is only the sixth. We only have, well, including this one, four Sundays um, until Lent. It's fast. Um, I saw something actually really interesting that um, I think it was actually from the Every Sacred Sunday uh, team and the email list that they're on, encouraging everyone to take some time and use this ordinary time, brief though it is, for growth still. We just came off this big Christmas high. We know we're going to have Lent coming up. It's kind of exhausting in a way, um, knowing that something else is going to start so soon and to not let these weeks go unused or underutilized. So thank you for being here with me. I hope that this is helping you grow. It's helping me grow. It helps me to slow down um, and to use this time well. Ordinary time is the green season, so we can think about images of growth and seeds growing, even though it is quite cold in Alabama right now. Uh, not too many people are thinking about green things, but the church and her wisdom gives us some greenery when, um, when things are chilly. So our gospel is from the Gospel of Mark, and this is when Jesus starts to call his disciples. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, come after me and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. So you may or may not know this about me, but I really like yarn and fiber crafts and wool and all the things that you can make with them uh, to the point where one of my COVID projects was learning how to spin. So I actually take wool, sometimes straight from a farm, and I spin it and I turn it into yarn and then I make stuff with it. And thinking about these nets that the apostles abandoned uh, really caught my attention in a new way because I've been spending so much time with fiber and thinking about how things are made, how clothing is made, how perhaps nets are made. So in doing a little research, um, finding out about how nets were probably made from either linen or flax and how those things had to be spun in order to have a net, someone had to take the time to spin that fiber to use for that purpose. And they had to make a lot of it because these nets were quite large. If you were going to make this your living, you had to be able to catch a lot of fish. Not only that, they had to be really strong. And they're not something that you could just go and, you know, like buy at the store or your local market stall to replace. Every single day, depending on the type of fishing you did, your nets would need to be cleaned and hung out to dry. Because if your nets got moldy, they would be weaker. You would not catch as many fish if your nets had a whole bunch of giant holes in them. A great deal of the fishing enterprise and industry was caring for your materials so that you could then go use them. This is probably true in a lot of things today, but it's really just catching my attention right now. The care and the time that had to go into these nets. They had to be checked for stability. 
They're not said to be retied. If you needed to patch a hole, it had to happen immediately because if it wasn't, you couldn't go fish the next day. These were a big deal. And in one line, the gospel says, Peter and Andrew abandoned them. It really just shows how profound this call of Christ was. This summoning of Jesus, this other worldliness that they would be willing to abandon these nets, not take them with them, not pack them up, not clean them first, check all the things and leave them for their children or for their partners or anything else. They literally take, they don't take, they just drop the nets and walk away. Sometimes when we're called to make a change, it can be as radical as this. We need to completely cut off from a certain area of life or thing of life in order to make the change that we're being called to. Sometimes our changes are smaller and it's not so much a complete turning away from a unhealthy person or idea or volunteer situation that it's time to move on from. Um, but we still have to let something go, something that might be pretty precious or that has been precious in the past. It's good to take the time to look around you, to look around the furniture of your life and see what things you're holding on to that you don't really need anymore, especially given what you're being called to. Prior to Jesus, Peter and Andrew needed those nets. Those were not things they could just discard because, well, I guess I'm not going to be a fisherman anymore. I hope my family, you know, enjoys eating sand because I don't have another trade otherwise. That wasn't an option. These nets were important and they took care of them. But once they met Christ, things changed and they didn't need the nets anymore. That was a big act of trust to let them go. So I don't know what you have going on in your life, but maybe there's something that you are being asked to let go of. You can ask St. Peter, ask St. Andrew, give me the strength and the trust that you had when you let those nets go. And if you don't believe me about how precious I believe those nets were, I'm going to include now some footage of me spinning and I'm going to use not just a spinning wheel with like the foot treadles and stuff because that's right over there. Um, I'm actually going to spin on a spindle. This isn't necessarily historically accurate for ancient Judaism. I don't know what they spun things on. There's a whole big world of spindles out there that I won't bring you into. but. Spinning wheels were for sure not part of it. So I'm just gonna include, include a little bit of spinning so that you can get a taste of how long it would have taken someone to spin enough linen or flax. I will be spinning wool. Again, this is not like a historical thing. Just go with it. Um, but just how long it would have taken to make enough for a net. It would have taken a long time. And with that, I hope that you have a good week and I'll see you next week. This type of spinning is called a supported spindle. My spindle is what's in my hand and then I have it resting on a little bowl so that it is supported. You can also spin um, 
without it being supported, those are typically called drop spindles. And if you go on YouTube and look up drop spindle, you will find people doing that. I also do that kind of spinning, but I'm not going to include that in this video because you're here for gospel content, reflections, not necessarily spinning content. But I thought it would maybe be fun to get a little glimpse of just how long it could have taken. I'm also not the most proficient spindle spinner, so someone who did this for their particular living in ancient Israel would not be flopping their spindle around quite so much. Um, I imagine they also probably would have used um, used more of a drop spindle style, but I do not know that for sure. So that's just a little bit of spindle spinning. And all you're doing is taking a fiber material of some kind and adding twists to it. That is the whole point in process and what holds things together.